Hi, everybody. I hope you guys are well. <sighs> Forgot I gotta look over here at the green light. Hi, green light. Anyway, um, I haven't done a video since I did my fertility video, being an older mom. And um, shout out to my friend who she has a channel on here. Um, I will link it when, uh, even though I have a very tiny audience, I will, <laughs> at the same time, like, I wish I had Jackie Ina numbers. Anyway, at the same time, um, I will link it, um, when she lets me know that that's okay and everything, but she has a weight loss channel. Um, she has successfully lost so much weight in a short space of time and, uh, she's extremely dedicated to her process. This video is actually, um, so I've had a lot of thoughts floating around in my mind. First off, as far as for me, the most, especially, okay, how shall I put this? I, my lane, if you will, is weight loss in general. It doesn't mean that that's the only thing I can talk about. I have a lot of things I want to talk about, but that is my main lane is weight loss, right? And uh, I've been wanting to do a weight loss update video, but it's been hard when uh, weight loss wise, I don't have too many updates for you guys, right? Um, by the way, while I do this, I'm going to oil my hair with Curl's Blueberry Mint Scalp Treatment, if you can see it, okay? Um, anyhow, yeah, so it's difficult though to do a weight loss update when, uh, you haven't been doing what you're supposed to do or your body hasn't done what you expected it to do, one or the other. Um, in my case, oops, I knocked down my pink sugar perfume. I love this stuff. This is my day. Um, anyway. <laughs> Um, I've turned my little table. This is, I'm actually in my computer room, but uh, we have a dining room table in my computer room and I've turned it into kind of like a vanity uh, ever since I knew that I wanted to do YouTube content again because I was going to talk about products and everything, whatever, because I love a lot of beauty products and... Um, I, how I started this video, I actually, this is a restart of the video. How I started it, I was doing my makeup on camera and I'm not a makeup artist or somebody who has skills or anything, but I like how I look in my makeup. Okay. And if you get anything out of how I look in my makeup where you think, oh, I like what she does or whatever, then maybe you can get something out of it. If not, that's cool too. I do want to learn how to do those like makeovers on myself where it looks like I've had all kinds of plastic surgery that I've never had and everything. That'd be neat. <laughs> Good plastic surgery, that is, um, <laughs> where you just know how to um, manipulate makeup like that. That would be neat. But um, as of right now, uh, I don't have those kinds of skills. But like I said, I like how I look at my makeup. I'm wearing, um, I'll show you at the end. Let me talk about this stuff first. So, what happened? Um, I wanted to do a video, like I said, um, about something to do with weight loss, right? Um, here is where I am. Tonight, I cheated on my keto journey. I've been on track for days, doing good. I had had a pizza craving and I gave into it. Let me tell you about the slippery slope. So I had to go by the bank today and while going to the bank, um, my mom had said, oh, hey, can you pick up my um, lunch order from this Chinese food restaurant? And I'm like, okay, bet. <laughs> so I didn't say like that to my mom, but yeah, um, I'm like, that's fine. 
So she gets sweet and sour chicken, which I enjoy. My favorite is General So. It used to be sweet and sour chicken, but now I'm more of a General So kind of girl. But she gets that. She gets shrimp fried rice, um, wonton soup, and egg foo young, okay? Which she says is uh, becoming a rarity here in the Houston area. If so, that's sad because egg foo young is awesome. Anyway, so I go and pick up her order. And uh, I, she's like, oh, you can have some. And I'm like, you don't have to ask me twice. So I have some of her rice. And uh, let me. Anyway, I have some of her rice. And uh, I have what else other than the rice? What else did I have? Um, I had a um, sweet and sour shrimp which was breaded, deep fried, kind of, I guess, tempura. Um, I love the sweet and sour sauce. It was that bright uh, reddish sauce, kind of like with a little orange to it. God knows what's in it, but it. <laughs> I love that sauce. It's so good. Um, it's. I've seen them do that for like the egg rolls to dip your egg rolls in and stuff. Um, but anyway, I had that. I had some of her rice, all that. Me eating this, I knew, okay, I guess I'm cheating today. So we had to take our daughter to her gymnastics class. And then, um, when that was over, we went to the grocery store and I was like, hey, you want to get some cookies? So we got some cookies. I didn't have any because they didn't have my flavor. It was from Crumble and they didn't have my flavor. So I didn't get any. Um, and so then uh, what else? Um, oh, I told my partner, I'm like, oh yeah, let's get some, um, what do you call it? Domino's pizza because I've been craving Domino's. What I really wanted, this is bad, but what I really wanted, but it's out of the way, was to go by, um, like, during rush hour, because this was during rush hour. Um, I wanted to go by Whole Foods and get my uh, cheesecake brownies and my chocolate chip oatmeal cookie brownie, or not brownies, cookies. They're so good. I wanted to do that, but uh, yeah. Let me see. Uh, but I didn't. So what I picked out on instead was pizza. Um, I didn't have any tea today. I did have some water. I didn't work out. Um, I've worked out three times in the past five days, I want to say. Doing very well. Leslie Sansone one mile workouts. Um, I love it. I genuinely love it. Highly recommend it. Put on your earbuds or headphones. Put on your music. For me, Amazon Music is an investment, okay? I'm just going to tell you, it is an investment. I'm so grateful for it uh, because it does motivate me to get up and get off my butt. And, it, and music brings me joy. So, you know, highly recommend. Anyway, and no, I, I wish I was being paid. You see my views. I, I'm not being sponsored. <laughs> But uh, sponsor the Amazon anyway. <laughs> but um, I'll share my playlist. I think my playlist is great. I love it. Um, but yeah, so I, it's like I've been doing good and then today I did bad. And it made me think, okay, so when I was doing this video before and I decided to re-record, um, I was only like, several minutes into it. It wasn't like, you know, a 40 minute video. I'm like, uh oh, let me stop here now. Um, but I was thinking I wanted to share something with you guys. So um, my highest weight ever that I know of was 350. My current weight, oh, I jumped on the scale before getting doing this video and with clothes on and my clothes are a shirt, a bra, underwear, pants, and socks. That might be two pounds. Um, I came in at 324 point something, I think, right? Uh, before that, 
when I weighed myself naked, just woke up, empty tummy, all that, you know, peed, everything, um, I was 317. Lowest I've been lately was 316.2. Lowest I've been on this journey was 315.5. I uh, want to say sometime maybe last month or something in February, something like that um, of 2023 or 2023. Damn, I can't believe it's 2024. My bad, 2024. Um, anyway, so I wish we could go back to 2023. <laughs> This year feels like it's going to be rough. Uh, no, we're, uh, you know what? I'm determined to make the most of it. Okay. Um, but back to my point is, um, I've had my good and bads, but yeah, I came in at 324 tonight and you know, I, what I wanted to get into is that as I was talking, it made me think of this guy um, who does these videos about, he's like some kind of, I want to say maybe dietitian or weight loss person or whatever. And he, I want to say in the UK, but don't hold me to it. He is so funny. Like he does these funny videos where he has this really bored, stoic look on his face. And I wish I could do an impression. He's a white guy and he doesn't, uh, the videos I've seen of him, he doesn't talk. He puts up words and, you know, words and I, and maybe pictures or something. And, and, you know, he'll be like, um, what does a Snickers bar do to you when you're trying to lose weight? And he's like, nothing or whatever. And I, I hate to quote him because that's not a direct quote, but he tries to say it's okay to eat certain kinds of foods. Let me tell you, I'm a food addict. Please don't tell me stuff like that. Don't. Don't tell me stuff like that. It's, I mean, if I completely lose my mind and I'm like, you know, I, I mess up one time and then I'm like, it's all over. I'll never lose this weight. Oh my God, I'm going to be fat for life over one mistake. That's okay in that context because it that is being dramatic. That is too much. But for my mindset, it can be very detrimental for me personally like to have what I call a setback to, um, I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted from my poor hair, but, um, I was just going to say it can be very detrimental for me to cheat. It just, you know, and if you, um, are like me, I'm sure you'll understand that concept. Like it can really throw you off. Um, and it's like you're a basketball player and you usually do a decent job and then you choke on this one shot. It can mess with your edge. And all of a sudden you just keep missing baskets that you wouldn't have missed probably if you hadn't missed that first one and it messes with your head. And I think that more than one thing can be true at the same time. We don't need to beat ourselves up, but we do need to avoid certain things. If that if those things bring us sadness, we need to avoid them. Okay? Think of it like this. You have this toxic ex-boyfriend that you know, again, he's toxic, but you have this unhealthy attraction towards him and imagine someone telling you encouraging you oh it's okay if you sleep with him from time to time you know and you're trying to like break the bonds that this person has over you and move forward with your life and you have someone enabling for some of us when you tell us that we can have certain things that we feel like we can't have or when we have these things it makes us feel bad about ourselves and makes us lose our um, direction and everything, then that's not good, okay? And I'm not, and trust me, I don't wanna encourage unhealthy eating habits. In one sense, a part of me, a part of me appreciates being smaller than I was when I started, but at the same time, in between that time from where I started to where I am right now, um, I've had a lot of uh, um, indulgences, you know, and, and all that kind of stuff. And some of those indulgences I was cool with, but some of them, like today, 
I'll be honest, I wish I didn't do. Okay, if I could take it back, I would. Okay, and um, so, you know, that's my story, I guess. That's something I want to share is uh, whether you talk yourself into stuff or other people talk you into stuff, you know, be careful about that because it can really, it can mess with your emotions and how you feel about yourself and stuff. So yeah, it's not good. Um, but, and I think that these people are well-meaning, some of them, you know, they just want you to be quote unquote happy. But if it was between the best dessert in the world and me reaching my goal, I would rather reach my goal. If you told me even, and, and that's an extreme example, let's say you said, hey, I can make you get on, you can be $2.99 tomorrow, or you can have the best dessert. And I have a super sweet tooth. You can have the best dessert. I would choose being under 300. <laughs> I know that life is more complicated than that. I wish like rub a lamp here, but, um, I just wanted to share that, you know, now, as far as what I originally, one of the things I wanted to record was what are my whys? Why do I want to lose weight? Recently, um, a TikToker got a lot of fame by the name of Risa Tisa. Uh, why the F did I marry him or something? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Something along those lines. Bless her heart. Or who the F did I marry? Something like that. Okay. Um, and as I understand it, because I have not watched this, I guess she married a scammer. Okay. Why am I talking about this? Because Charlemagne the God um, was using the phrase big backs and <laughs> big back for me is a relatively new phrase but I've had a big back most of my life I've had this back where my back looks like a pair of boobs okay and I have these like football player shoulders and stuff you know whatever um bigger than a football player's shoulders <laughs> minus the muscle but you know um, so I'm for sure a big back and, uh, I'm not a fan of, how shall I put it? I think that society needs to grow comfortable with understanding that there is more than one truth in the world, that more than one thing can be true at the same time. I'm going to give you guys an example of something recently. So it has something to do with politics. And, and if this offends anybody after listening to what I'm saying, then I think it's best that you just don't watch my content because I think this is like very normal, logical thinking, what I'm about to say. So I live in Houston, Texas, and we have a lot of crime in Houston, Texas, unfortunately. It's not like a horrible place to live or anything like Detroit is. I'm sorry. No offense to my fellow Detroiters. I was born and raised in Detroit until I was 14 years old and I moved down here to Houston, Texas um, over 20 years ago. Um, my mother was born and raised in Detroit. My daddy was born and raised in Detroit. We are uh, originally Detroiters. I don't claim, I don't claim Detroit anymore. My siblings, all that uh, Detroit. I don't claim Detroit anymore. <laughs> but um, originally, I, and by the way, sorry, I'm used to looking center. Let me look over here. Anyway, I do not claim Detroit anymore. Um, very often I, I claim it here and there, but I mostly think of myself as a Houstonian now. Okay. But I'm planning on going to Detroit next year and I'm scared. I'm just going to tell you, I'm scared. It's so much crime there. It's just, it is like heartbreaking um, it, I don't feel safe. And like, I mean, I, I don't even know how to explain it. it. Think of the worst area you can go to. It just, it's Detroit is effing rough. If you don't believe me, go look it up. But I've had so many friends and family from Michigan, Detroit, Michigan, let me clarify, who have been the victims of violent crime 
or just crime period where they park their car outside and it's gone. Um, I have a cousin that while she and her kids were asleep, someone broke in while they slept and stole their stuff, okay? It's bad. It's bad. So, Houston, is Houston on that level? No, okay? Now, here's where I'm going with this. Okay, so right now it's an election year, and I'm not talking about the major politics. I'm talking about more local, right? Um, and you have people that they they're um, seemingly being compassionate towards people who are brought up in these messed up situations of um, so socioeconomic distress or whatever you want to call it. And they're like all compassionate and stuff. And they seem to forget about the people who they are that are being victimized in the meantime. Right. And I think like, and then you have the people who they want to throw away the key, lock them up and throw away the key and not fix the root problem, which unfortunately creates more problems because sometimes those people have made children. A lot of times they've made children and then you've now left their, um, the mother of those children, a single mom and left those kids without a father and so on and so forth, which then just keeps the cycle going and going and going. And depending on the person again it it's like you want to stamp out the root but at the same time if you see a rotten leaf you want to cut it off the tree so yes we want to fix stuff but we also need to stop bad stuff in the meantime if that makes any sense you don't want to just say oh i'm sorry you know you didn't have a father that's why you act this way and and go on and you know you go out there and then they keep breaking into people's houses and doing terrible things you know like i don't know how to explain it we i feel like 2024 they say is the year of truth is the year that things come out and for me it's like let's all live in our truth whatever that truth is on all sides of the spectrum and not feel like we have to cherry pick truth like oh you know everybody should feel love that's true everybody should feel love but some people do really awful things and so <laughs> You please stay away from me. Okay, you're doing bad stuff. And I'm the, I love myself too much to be victimized by you. Please stay away from me. You know what I mean? Like we have to accept that there's multiple um, aspects to the truth, you know, that there's, you know, if that makes any sense, and that there's multiple solutions and so on and so forth, you know. Um, but instead, so many people are just headstrong and they only want to see things from one angle. And that's where we get into trouble. You know, um, I forget where I was going with this because I know I had talked about the guy who, you know, with the Snickers example and like, oh, you can enjoy a Snickers. Well, some of us can't. Um, some of us, it, it messes with our heads when we do those things. So I don't know if that's why I brought up this particular thing or not. Um, but, oh, um, Risa Tisa, that's what I was talking about. Because I was saying Charlemagne the God, um, he was attacking women like me. Uh, let's just be honest. Women like me, who I guess he feels has low standards and that that's why bad things happen. I've seen bad things happen to women who are, by society standards, gorgeous, slim, beautiful, gorgeous women by society standards and bad things have happened to them. Um, but do I feel that in general people, when we don't feel great about ourselves and a part, a part of us feeling great about ourselves is based on how we navigate society, how people treat us. If you're made to feel beautiful, then you think you're beautiful more than not compared to someone who was not made to feel beautiful is more likely to not think that they're beautiful. Yes. Again, you know, I'm going to talk about colorism for a second. I'm a black woman. And um, let's just say I'm certainly not light skinned. Okay. Um, some people have called me medium and some people call me dark. Okay. So, but what I'm not is light. 
And I know that some of us have seen people where based off of their skin tone, they either were treated better or treated worse based off of their skin tone. And sometimes, um, let's be honest, I've seen people, and I'm sure if you're an African-American person or even if, if any ethnic person, uh, or hell, you're white, okay? Um, you know, white people's colorism to me is light colored eyes and blonde hair, right? Like if you have dark brown eyes and dark hair, I think that you're more likely to um, be ignored compared to your blonde hair, blue eyed um, uh, peers. Um, they say like most blondes in this country, USA, are not natural blondes. They dye their hair and they dye their hair because within their culture, and I, I'm just saying this in a, in a sense that colorism goes across the spectrum. You know, it's in Asian countries, it's obviously in Africa and America, it's just everywhere, you know. Um, and it's even in Europe because, but it again, in different ways, you know, it's just, but it's there, you know. Um, and I've heard like white people like attack their own eye color or whatever saying, you know, um, that they didn't like their brown eyes or dark eyes or something like that compared to blue eyes and, you know, wear contacts to have lighter colored eyes and everything, you know. So, yeah, colorism, it's not even entirely racially based. Um, you know, obviously in modern society, race does have a lot to do with it, but it's not, it's stuff that even without the racial aspect, it's just been a part of the world. Um, they say that how it started for a lot of cultures was because being out in the sun, the darker you were, um, from being out in the sun, you know, it represented someone who was a servant versus someone who was upper class and didn't have to do that, you know. So anyway, I just say this to say that I'm sure we've all seen someone who maybe they're a white woman with blonde hair and blue eyes, or maybe they're um, a, uh, um, a black woman with lighter skin tone or an Asian woman with lighter skin tone or what have you. And they're deemed more attractive than they would be if you changed their color scheme. And it's like, you know, when I was younger, especially, that was like more frustrating. Um, I even had a conversation with a light toned African American Puerto Rican mixed friend of mine about it because she was talking about Chili from TLC, funny enough, because Chili's in the news now. And this was a conversation that took place like damn near 20 years ago. It was a long time ago. Uh, we were both super young at the time. And uh, she was saying that she never thought Chili was very pretty. And I think Chili's drop day gorgeous, but this was her perception. She's like, yeah, I always thought she was only pretty because of her hair, you know, but then again, and, and she thought about it deeper and she's like, but then again, her hair is a part of her beauty. Like that, that's like, you know, um, unfair. Hold on, you guys. Yes, baby. Can you come into this, um, my tablet? Um, if you go get it. <laughs> anyway, um, what was I saying though? I'm so sorry, you guys. Um, you gonna go get it? You're doing jumping jacks. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, I was saying about my friend that um, she had said that uh, and she had acknowledged that to take that away from her would be take robbing her of part of her beauty. That's like if you you know, think that Sanaa Lathan is beautiful, which I think she's beautiful, but then you change her face and then you say, see, is she still beautiful? And it's like, well, that's not really fair if that's her face, you know? Um, baby, you're connected to the internet. Finally. Yeah, you need to close this out and start over. There you go, mama. Okay. Um, anyhow, <laughs> uh, what was I saying though? Um, yeah, so like if you think I have pretty um, full lips and then you're like, oh, she wouldn't be pretty if you took away her lips. Well, damn, 
you know, that's a part of my face, so I would say not. Now, it's one thing if your beauty is artificially enhanced, you know, if I started out with thin lips and then, you know, I got an injection and then you say, oh, she wouldn't be pretty without that, then that would make more sense. But at the same time, um, you know, <sighs> listen, I'm extremely overweight. I have had fantasies of getting a body lift once I reach my goal weight. I was thinking about that the other day, in fact, and hoping and praying that if I get one, that I get a good result from it, that I don't have any issues or anything, and that I love the results and I look beautiful, right? You know, that wouldn't be my natural born, you know, physique or anything because I've stretched it out. I've, you know, I've got stretch marks, you guys, whatever. So I'm not judging if that makes any sense. Like if, if that's how you get it, that's how you get it. Whatever. So, you know, I don't know. I do want to do a video about beauty for sure. I know that I've been all around the world. Um, going back to the Risa Tisa thing. <laughs> thank God I can remember that part because my memory, I'm one of those people, and this is not even an age thing. I've been like this. Um, I'm one of those people that I'll mention something and then it'll spark me to think about something else. And I'll talk about that. And then, you know, and next thing you know, it's like, oh, where did I start? It's like a tangled up mess of cords, you know, um, my brain. But back to the Risa Tisa thing, I think like if you... And sidebar, this is not really an attack on her. I don't even know this lady. I don't watch her content or anything. But I'm going off of the whole Charlemagne big back thing and everything. And I think that there is some truth to women who don't feel good about ourselves and are not super successful with men who are um, dating eligible, uh, dating eligible or whatever. Uh that's my PC word um, or phrase or whatever. But, you know, a guy who you'd want to date. He's got his own everything. And you all you have to do is show up and be yourself. That kind of dude. Um, I think, like, for a lot of women, you know, I think even if you're beautiful by society standards, that can be a challenge to some degree, it's not like, you know, they're just falling out of the sky. But then especially if you are not society's ideal of beautiful and you believe that of yourself as well, because I do think confidence when I was younger, um, I might have talked about this in a video. I'm not sure. I feel like I have. Um, when I was younger, I used to think confidence was bogus. Like what I mean is I thought, OK, if you look like Halle Berry, it doesn't matter how you feel about yourself because people are going to want you. If you look like fill in the blank, we're going to say a female Shrek, okay? Because we don't want to dog anybody. So we're going to say a female Shrek. Then by default, I don't care how confident you are, nobody's going to want you. That's not entirely true. I have noticed that a lot of times when I feel good about myself, I am more attractive. I am more attractive. When I when I hold my head up high and I feel good about myself, I'm more attractive. I I don't know how to explain that. And I also feel that of other people too, because I've seen people that aesthetically speaking, and I think I have a pretty decent eye for beauty, they're not most people's ideal of attractive, but they don't seem to know it. And they, they, which is beautiful, and they walk around like they are, like they might as well be a supermodel on the cover of Vogue from their perspective. And, okay, she's playing a video game, sorry. <laughs> like, anyway, and they tend to be more successful compared to someone who is on their same caliber, but knows, like, lives in their truth of I'm not attractive, so I don't feel very good about myself. Confidence does matter, okay? It does. One thing I do want to add is I do think that you should feed positivity into yourself, and I say this, and I don't always do it, but I do think you should. I do think that that is also a part of what feeds your confidence, what feeds your inner light, etc. So I do think that you should 
love on yourself and be kind to yourself and talk to yourself like someone you love because hopefully you do love yourself and if you don't you should okay but yeah Charlemagne ended up having to apologize for the big back comment <laughs> that's how that story ended um <laughs> you guys anyway not Charlemagne oh my gosh but yeah so reasons why to get to the original topic reasons why I want to lose weight part one no um I really want to go to Disney World with my family next year there's a lot of walking and I like to walk but I want to take pictures and I want to feel good in those pictures that's another thing you guys um I we took our daughter to Lego Land for her birthday in October last year and uh, got together with some other family and everything um, in the area. And uh, we took a picture. You know, they push pictures on you over there at Legoland Austin. And uh, you guys, I was, I don't know how to explain. Okay. I guess my, was that my phone around here? What did I do with it? Anyway, I was looking for my phone. Hold on. I'm tempted to call this man and ask him to get my phone for me, but that's kind of rude while I do a video. I, I'll just wait. Anyway, I, I do like to have my phone though, because like if I want to look something up and know what something is or isn't or whatever, I like having my other phone so that I can like, you know, whatever. Anyway, okay. So about the Lego lamp thing is I hate it. You guys hear my daughter. She's screaming at the game. Okay. Um, she's with her dad right now <laughs> in the bedroom. Um, oh, okay then. Um, I guess that's better than hearing our smoke alarm go off, which I'm sure you guys have heard that too. I did not know <laughs> that that was like... <laughs> And that was like other people. I thought that was just me <laughs> with the chirping smoke alarm. Oh my gosh. Anyway, that's for another topic. We've changed the batteries. I don't know. Well, I do know why it does that. It's hardwired to the house, which like just change the batteries. Why have batteries and I, I don't, I don't get it whatever and it's hardwired to the house because then the only way to get it to stop is if you turn off all the power and then it's as quiet as a church mouse in here it's crazy anyway okay sorry you guys I told you I'm, my brain is tangled cords I hope you can hang with me um but I was saying about the reasons why I want to lose weight I was saying you know uh about the Lego land trip that we took last October uh, we got a picture and y'all, I was so wide. I was so wide in the picture. It was unreal. I just, I, I called myself panoramic view. That's what I looked like to myself. Like, I'm just like, how am I this wide? How? Like, geez, you know? And it just made me sad. Like, I'm like, I'm just walking around this big ball with legs. And I know that's not me being very kind to myself, but that's, you know, my honest feelings of how I looked, you know. Um, besides that, you know, I and I want to feel look good and feel good in pictures. Uh, recently, I've, okay, so quick story, if I didn't tell you guys this. So, um... My weight loss journey that started in 2014, I would go on to go from at the highest that year, 315.8, all the way down to 209.2 the next year uh, in late 2015, okay? I started February of um, 2014, and by November 2015, I had gotten down to 209.2. Yay, you go girl. Okay. And by the way, when I started, I was I started at 301.6, but that year, sometime in January, I was 315.8. So that's why 
I take that into account. I was 315.8. I remember that. And I've also kept records online and stuff because I used to track my weight loss journey and everything. Okay. In case you guys are wondering, like, how do you remember that? Okay. I kept records. So <laughs> on that note, um, that weight loss journey was the most significant one I feel like I've ever been on. It was a life-changing journey for me, sadly. I regained everything and then some later on down the road. Um, but why I mention that, okay, is so I would even though I regained some weight back in 2016, 2017, um, and 2018, I was still um, smaller than I had originally started out at, at 300 plus pounds, right? Um, when I had gotten pregnant, I was somewhere in the 260s. Uh, for reference, prior to um, my weight loss journey, the last time I'd been in the 260s was in 2005 when I was on another weight loss journey. And before that, since I was like a teenager or something. So, um, you know, uh, why was I gonna mention that? Um, had something to do with, uh, da -da 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 -da. I'm trying to remember you guys, cause I was talking about the weight loss and everything and I'm trying to remember where I was. Cause I know I was talking about the Legoland thing and I was talking about the, panoramic view of myself and stuff and how big I was. Um, shoot. See, this is why I can't talk about everything because I lose my train of thought. Um, <clears throat> hopefully it'll come back to me. We'll see before this video is over. But um, what I was going to say though is about my reasons the Legoland thing, I, I just felt like a big ball of fat. Oh, I know what it is. Thank you. Okay, I reminded myself. So, me personally, I still felt good about my body in the 260s. I have pictures of my body in the 260s where my boobs look huge, okay? um, My waist, it's thick, but it's a lot smaller than the width of my breasts. So my breast, like, so I look hourglassy. I call myself an apple shape because I have a lot of belly. Um, okay. This is uh, not fair because this is um, me at 300 and something pounds. Oop. Can I do a body shot? Okay. Um, excuse the mess if you uh, see it. I, I did my best to try to hide it. But um, yeah, I'm 300 and something pounds now, right? Showing off my big back. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm 300 and something pounds now, right? Um, when I was in the 260s, I had a more curvaceous body. Um, and so, like, I liked how I looked. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. Now, was it the best I looked? Hell no. Hell no. But did I like still how I looked? Yes. Um, now, since, ha okay, so I had my daughter. Okay, I remember my train of thought. I had, ooh, ooh. Not my battery being low. Sorry, you guys, my battery's low. Um, I had my daughter, and uh, when I during my pregnancy, the first trimester, I didn't get any bigger than like the 270s, and then by the second and third trimester, um, especially when I stopped vomiting and everything, I got into the 280s, and eventually the early 300s, not too much smaller, smaller, but not too much smaller than I currently am. But then after giving birth, as I've talked about, I even have a video fresh from, you know, right after I gave birth, six week checkup, all that kind of stuff. I lost like 40 pounds damn near in a matter of a couple of weeks or something, because of course there's the weight of the baby. Uh, there's the weight of your uterus. There's all this fluid, especially if you have preeclampsia like I did, so on and so forth. So I lost this massive amount of weight. The lowest I got down to was the very early 270s, almost into the 260s. 
before that postpartum depression got me, y'all, it got me, and I started eating, 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 and I didn't really stop until, um, well, not true. I kept trying to lose weight, but I would lose my motivation. Like I, I kept losing my steam, like a car that needs gas or needs help and you can get it to turn on like, and then it stops on you and it keeps stopping. And that's what was happening to me. And, you know, then finally in the year 2019, um, what kind of motivated me was my daughter had her first birthday. And a couple of things happened, as I remember. One of the things was that my dad came to town. And the last time my dad had seen me, I was about, okay, at this point, I was about 315-ish or some 316. We'll just say 316. The last time he had seen me, I was like 70 pounds lighter than that or more, 70 or 80 pounds lighter. And... I was embarrassed and I did and it was a big deal that my dad came but I was so embarrassed by the pictures I didn't like how I looked and that's the one and only time my dad has been down here um since we moved here 20 something years ago and uh was for my daughter's first birthday and and I'm not knocking my dad or anything I'm just saying like you know so it was a really big deal and I felt like I got robbed because I hated how I looked so bad that I didn't take a decent amount of pictures you know like I would have if I'd been much smaller and felt better about myself um next is uh, my mother-in-law took some pictures from the birthday party and I didn't know I was getting my pictures taken because I, I intentionally avoided the camera and she posted one of the pictures of me and I hated how I looked in it so bad, which I'm going to be honest with you, when I look back on it now, I'm like, oh, I didn't look so bad. Like, but in that moment, I hated how I looked and I was horrified. Okay. I was almost, I almost felt, I'm going to be honest with you. I almost got my feelings hurt as far as like, why would you post this picture of me? You know, I look terrible. That's how, kind of how I felt. I'll be honest with you guys at first. Um, well, speed ahead, uh, that those things kind of motivated me, I think. So I went on my weight loss journey in late 2019 and I would go on to lose over 30 pounds. Okay just under 34 pounds, if I'm not much mistaken, 33.9 pounds, I think was what I lost, something like that. Point is, then, you know, different things happened in my life. You know, of course, we were going through the pandemic. The first year of the pandemic was the year that I was losing weight, but the pandemic, of course, dragged on into 2021. Um, that was the year of Delta, and a lot of people were dying. Delta was extremely aggressive, and I think more virulent than uh, the Alpha strain, I, if I'm not much mistaken. Plus, some places were bringing down restrictions, so of course more people are going to be exposed. You know, whatever, it, it is what it is. I mean, again, I, I'm talking about truth here for a second. I'm not going to get into a COVID debate, but I think that no matter what aisle you were on, there was truth and fiction on both sides, if you know what I mean. I'll just leave it at that, okay? So, um, as as it were, though, you know, so that was a tough year of 2021, you know, and uh, what else happened? Um, so, uh, you know, I got knocked off balance, and then I started again in late 2023, and here we are, um, August of 2023, late August. So, yeah. That's, uh, you know, um, and what else is going on? Um, why I'm mentioning this is, uh, cause I, I gained my thought. Oh yeah. About pictures. So since I've had my daughter for the most part, I have not been good with how I've looked and it even took me a while to want to post face pictures. And then after a while I started to post face pictures, um, and now I do post a lot more face pictures, but I feel awkward because, um, excuse me, I feel awkward because I feel like everybody's going to know I'm fat. Everybody already knows I'm fat, but how fat is fat? Like there's, and I was thinking about that too the other day. I'm like, okay, there's fat, 
and then there's extremely fat and how fat is fat like you know whatever and I'm thinking like I look humongous like in pictures and stuff whatever and especially when someone else is holding the camera so I don't know it's just and as I say this I know all of this stuff comes off as fat shamey it's not intent or I said fat shamey I Oh my gosh, I'm doing another video after this because I want to kind of get into some stuff. But um, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It's kind of late. Um, but yeah, so just long and short of it is that I want to be able to take pictures and feel good about myself when I see those images and not be self-conscious and not hide behind people. That's another thing I do is I'll sometimes hide behind people. I don't want to hide behind anybody. I want to be like proud and like oh this is what I look like and don't I look beautiful and look isn't my neck a normal color that matches the rest of my skin because it isn't right now um right now I have some spearmint tea uh from a company called uh Versana and I'm drinking it with Trader Joe's organic green tea I drink these two together my tea is cold my tea has gone cold mm. And I sweeten it with stevia. And that's become my favorite drink. That and water. Um, I was drinking the bay drinks and I stopped. And for financial reasons, it's good for our pocketbooks. But also, because they're not very um, economically priced, no offense, compared, well, for people like us who are on a budget. But also... Uh, they changed the formula, and now I don't like the new formula, so they lost a customer anyway. If they hadn't changed that formula, I'll be honest, I'd be still drinking it, but they changed the formula, so I'm good. Anyway, <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm drinking the spearmint tea mixed with green tea, and it's supposed to be really good for you, uh, especially having PCOS. I got my lipstick on the side of the cup, but... Mm. but yeah so uh what did I want to tell you guys I was still going on about things that I want so another thing I was talking to my partner about this so um one of my old videos back when I didn't did I know I was pregnant yet I might have known I was pregnant but I was like in first trimester um, there's a couple of videos with me and, um, uh, like family and stuff, you know, my stepson, I, I realized I do have videos with my stepson, but he was much smaller at the time. Um, and we're on this, um, I don't know what you call it. I'm going to call it a roundabout, but I don't know if that's what you call it. It's, uh, this circular thing where you get on it and somebody turns it around and stuff like a makeshift merry-go-round or whatever and we were on one of those at the park it was so much fun honestly my partner was the one who was like turning us around and around and everything it was so much fun anyway on that note um why was I mentioning that oh yeah so the lady who's in the video with me um who is actually my partner's ex and the mom to my stepson, okay, um, and, you know, a close, you know, family member for that reason and everything, you know, and uh, all of that, you know. Um, we used to go to the parks together. We would do this co-parenting thing. We would spend time together and you know, it was so much fun. This is back when she lived local. She doesn't live in the state anymore. And it was so much fun way back when. Um, well, on that note is that, uh, what happened with her? Um, trying to remember. And I should do a video about co-parenting and meeting the ex and all that. I should do, oh my gosh. Okay, there's an idea. All right. Anyway, but we'll get to that. So um, about that, though, uh, we used to go to the park, you know, because uh, we were playing Pokemon Go. And um, also, you know, because of Little Dude, I call him Little Dude, because of him, you know, we would go to the park and everything and or different parks. And um, while we were there, 
she would get on the swings and I love swings. Like that's, I, I love swings. I always have. I, when I was a child, these two little girls that I played with who lived behind my grandparents, um, they had a swing set that they lived with, I believe they lived with their grandparents and their, I guess their mom also lived there. I don't think their dad was around. I'm not sure. So don't hold me to that. But anyway, um, they would let me get on their swing and I was a little fat kid and the grandfather resented it. And he, he was like, oh, she's going to break the swing. I was about the same age as them, but I was a little fat kid. And I even went flying off the swing. Oh yeah. I think why he got mad. One of the things is if I'm not much mistaken, the little corkscrew thing at the top was starting to extend when my little chubby butt was on it, my little Peppa Pig butt was on it. So I had but I, I, him shaming me the way he did definitely played a role among other things. But that's like the most influential moment of me feeling bad about getting on a swing. And I love swings. And when I go to a playground and I see a swing set, my presumption is that that's intended for kids. I'm definitely not a kid anymore. And that's not fair for me to fuck up their equipment. And I get mad when I see a swing that's like all stretched out that's about to break because presum presumably adults were on it. But it's it's possible that it was a bunch of kids that did it. But, you know, in my head, I'm thinking, oh, some big ass adult who didn't give a damn or something was on it or two adults because I've seen that before too where like two teenagers or two adults will be on one swing and their weight is bringing it down now here and there I've gotten on a swing as an adult and particularly with that uh woman who was in the video and I say that woman because I don't want to put her name out there or anything like that um that's only why I'm calling her that like to you know protect identities and stuff whatever um anyway so uh what I was going to say, should I say this woman? I'll say this woman instead of that woman because I've heard that woman is an insult. Anyway, it's not meant to be. Um, so uh, I remember one time she had said to me because she was, uh, you know, also a plus size woman. Um, at the time, we were about the same size. Now I've got her beat big time. Okay. Uh, by at least 50 or more pounds, I've got her beat. Um, 50 to six, around 50 to 60 pounds, something like that. Anyway, point is, is that at the time we were around the same size. And I remember I told her because she was on the swing, she loves swings too. And she was like, Oh, go ahead and get on the swing. And I was like, no, because I don't, you know, I don't want to break the swing and stuff, you know, whatever. And she's like, girl, if I can get on here, you can get on here. And she kind of talked me into it. And I was still so conscious and stuff. And I don't go super high on swings because I do not want to go flying off so I don't get super high, but I just like swings, you know? And so she kind of talked me into getting on swings. That's kind of, but why I'm mentioning that is because I want to get on swings. I want to, like, I want to enjoy my life and my body. I want to enjoy myself and I feel like I can't. I feel like I can look at other people, but I can't fully enjoy myself at this size. That is why I want to lose weight. That That's the, you know, I can give you specifics like the swing. I can give you specifics like Disney World, all that. But the big one is that I just want to feel good in my own body and have that range of movement and comfort. Um, you know, the other day I was exercising and I had my headphones playing in my ear and stuff, listening to some music like, big girls don't cry and whatever, you know, by Fergie or whatever. I forgot what a bop that was. It was so cool. Anyway, I'm listening and I can hear my knees crunching inside and I'm like, oh my gosh. And, and sidebar, this is not age related. This has been happening to me since my early Twitter at, or at least early twenties, possibly late teens. It's been happening to me. Um, I had uh, beat the Obama Affordable Health Care Act as far as, you know, being able to be covered until age 26. I was beyond age 26. Um, I, I'm, I think when it passed, I was still in my 20s, but I was beyond 26. Okay, so I had missed out, right? Um, now, why I'm mentioning that is because how it worked, I think, was I got cut off at 23, of my mom's insurance. So, you know, other than when I was pregnant, I have not had insurance 
since, you know, I was about 23 years old and I'm 41 years old now. So that fucking sucks. Let me just tell you. But the reason why I'm mentioning it is because, um, what happened? Uh, oh yeah. So my mom had this thing where before I get cut off, she wanted me to go to all these doctor's appointments because she knew, hey, you're about to get cut off. You might as well just gonna, you know, get what you can out of the plan and everything in the meantime. So we went to this one doctor and I was telling him, I'm like, at the time, uh, hold on, you guys. Um, this was actually, maybe I got cut off at 22. Mm -hmm. Okay, because when this happened, I was like 20. 2004 no I you know what I don't know what it was because I was 22 um I think when I went to the doctors I think and he had suggested Weight Watchers anyway point is <laughs> I was telling him let me get to it I was telling him I'm like yeah my knees make the let me see if you guys can hear it hold on back up so I can extend my knee out hold on okay I heard it hold on Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this one's loud. I don't know if you can pick up on that. That is so fucking crunchy. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like my knees are eating Lay's potato chips or something. Um, and it's been like that since I was super young. Now that I'm older, I feel like it's only going to go downhill from here, if you will. But it's always been like that because of all this weight I'm not supposed to have on my body, you guys. And I think it got a lot better when I lost my weight. I can't remember every improvement that I had when I lost my weight. And I did not get to enjoy the smallest form of myself very long because of the uh, depression that I went through. Baby, what's up? Okay, mommy's recording a video. Um, here's her dad. I'm about to get her. Go, baby. <laughs> you want to say hi? My daughter snuck in on me while I was recording. And I, like, saw, you know, out of my peripheral vision or whatever, and maybe even the camera, I don't know. I saw her. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I, I greeted her, and I was just like, oh, mommy's doing a video, da, 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 whatever. And I was ready to send her off. But then I was like, oh, do you want to say hi? And um, she thinks about it for a second, and she comes over to say hi. And then she's not talking. And earlier she popped up and was, um, you know, trying to say hi. And she's like, hi, guys. And I'm not talking about the video I posted, but the video that I redid. She's like, hi, guys. And because uh, she watches a lot of Ryan's World. Anyway, <laughs> um, so from there, uh, she starts crying because she knows she has to go to sleep. So that snippet, I want to cut out the video because, you know, you guys don't want to see my daughter cry over going to sleep and stuff. That's not fun. Um, so, you know, but I just want to explain what happened. So I, I'm not going to cut every little bit out, but just that little piece out because, you know, um, I don't want to embarrass her when she's older. Like, look at you having a fit on mommy's video because you have to go to bed. Anyway, I think I'm going to cut it here because I think I've been talking forever. I don't have my glasses on right now, so I'm going to put them on and see how long I've been talking. Oh, my Lord. Longest video yet, an hour and four minutes. If you hung in there, you are the true VIP. Thank you. Um, I appreciate you. Please like and subscribe. I'm not going to ask you to share yet um, unless you know someone specific who'd like it, but not necessarily, you don't have to share anything at this point but please at least like and subscribe and please comment if you have anything to say about what I'm talking about I appreciate you bye